Okay, so a little quick update on the thing. Um, okay, so I got these two uh, 10 turn pots mounted to this old license plate that I had lying around. Hey, it helps. This is from 2014, so when you keep things for three years, you're gonna use them. So these are used to set the frequency on this up amp here. The thing on the right is a charge pump which creates negative voltage um, off of the positive one. So basically power comes in here and gets inverted by this. So then it gets, so the voltage gets into this op amp which oscillates at the frequency that you can set with these two. They're both in parallel so you, depending on how you turn them you get more or less control out of one of them um, which is good so you can have a um, more sensitive control for a certain bandwidth um, and then the signal should get converted to a pulse train by this guy which is also an, uh, an op amp and uh, the micro a741 or ua whatever you want to call it so these are these two are the same. The problem I am facing currently is this thing just acts like a buffer. I did not put anything on its output. There's no feedback loop or anything. But register, or am I just stupid? Oh yeah, that's just um, that cap is just there to um. DC couple it or AC well basically it, it makes the signal centered in the in the middle because it's actually like on the negative rail because for some reason the signal that's coming out of here that is actually um, going from positive to negative and back forth it's a bit on the positive side but that's okay um, so this comes in here in the in this case in the inverting input not in the non-inverting input for a specific reason because if I put the non the, the inverting input to ground and the non-inverting input to the signal all I get is uh, well basically full-on positive voltage which is not what I want I want it to be amplified to a pulse train and it should swap polarity um, and I don't know why the fuck this up amp doesn't work. I replace it with another chip, same result. And if I flip the inputs, I get a um, basically the same wave on the negative spectrum for some weird reason. I don't know why. So that that's kind of annoying that this doesn't work because I have used this kind of amplifier before to create a pulse strain out of a sine wave. And it worked, and I don't know why it doesn't work this time. So maybe the negative voltage isn't that great, but I measured it, and it showed a stable negative voltage on the oscilloscope. So yeah, time to tinker a bit more with this uh, and see why the fuck this doesn't work. I will next. I will probably just use a DC motor and have some over here. Um, that it will just turn, use the sine wave that's coming from it, put it in the up end, see what happens. And if it works, I know there's something else pretty fishy going about here. So, yeah, that's the current update. I still, well, I get the right frequency now, but I get a stupid sine wave. Which is not what I want. <laughs> I don't want a sine wave. Uh, I want a rectangle wave. I mean, a sine wave would also work. The thing is... This is rather made for rectangle waves, so I thought, hey, I'm just gonna put this in here with infinite gain, basically. Yeah, but it's, it's just a gain of one for some reason, and I don't know why. Maybe I have to look it up. Maybe I wired it wrong. Let's take a look at the thing which... Oh, shit, where did I put that? <laughs> where did I put the thing? It's, yeah, it's down here, okay. So, this is the thing. God dang it, there's no light in here. Um, what I do see is a diode and two resistors. The diode is probably um, 
to prevent negative voltage going to the controller and the resistors are there for I guess to set a uh, amplification level so yeah there's no additional circuitry necessary for this thing to work um, yeah maybe I shouldn't put all this weight on it but eh, never gonna use it again probably at least not until I move um, yeah also something I don't know I want to say this is a stupid old tube radio which almost killed me because uh, it seems like there's just like full line voltage on the housing on the metal housing inside so I don't know if I will ever be able to fix this it has a lot of dried out capacitors and I would have to replace them to at least make it work normally again I would have to test all this shit I don't have a circuit diagram which I would probably need because the wiring in these old radios if you have ever taken one apart it's horrible talking of old radios this thing here this is an old amplifier which I got from a friend because my old stereo which is in pieces in a box back here um, stopped working so I got this and you see four ohm speakers front rear right left four channels um, 2 times 10 watt continuous, 2 times 15 watt dynamic, whatever that means. So 2 times 4 on 4 channels, I don't know. So maybe 7 watt per channel, I don't know, that doesn't sound right. But yeah, it's not that much. Also it has old plugs and everything and they're not in the best shape. Um, so as this thing is rather beat up, I might... <laughs> um, might take it on me to Ooh, let me turn this okay so you see it here with all the fucking controls I might try to um, improve it the thing is though a eh, lot of old hair so yeah you have things here oh, there's stupid insect okay so you have different inputs that's not the problem you can just switch them with this thing probably this thing stereo to mono that is a single stage to combine stereo and mono channels that's yeah I don't know how it's done yet I, I would have to take a look inside maybe but probably the switch that goes over here to the circuit and does some strange things or maybe just puts a diode <laughs> on one of the channels and just pipes it into the same signal or it just uses the left channel who knows so here you have loudness and linear um, so basically if you plug this in or out you get one of the different modes loudness has more bass and a linear I don't know what the fuck um, bass control treble control these two controls are crazy like if you actually do this it's just gonna be bass like to no end so <laughs> yeah you usually just put it like this and it's one to one the uh, input signal but if you just turn it up to 11, uh, it's gonna be pure bass, which is kind of cool because uh, I like if you can vary the signal that much. But the problem is if you put this too high, it, uh, it happened that the amplifier got into a feedback loop in itself. And yeah, guess what? If you have a feedback loop of a low frequency, it's just gonna rattle everything out of your speakers. That's not very nice. So yeah, balance left, right which yeah makes sense quadro effect which basically means front left uh, phones so headphones and on and off so it might be a bit hard to get a uh, amplifier which has these two and actually these two and not what my current amplifier has and whatever this is so a loudness mode that you can switch on and off maybe just <laughs> I don't know change the bass put that somehow in here so if you plug it in or out you get more bass here just automatically that would be kind of cheating um, but yeah this is a project for well I don't know maybe 2019 <laughs> if I ever get around to it but yeah this is at least one it yeah it's it's kind of beat up I want to see if I can improve it and maybe give it back someday um, I don't know if he actually needs it anymore, it just was sitting on his uh, attic, so 
don't think he actually needs it anymore. I removed the plug actually because I put a switch in here. I didn't want to use this switch. Um, the reason being, I switch this thing on and off every fucking day. Um, maybe even multiple times. So, I decided, well, this is a antique thingy. I don't want to wear out this switch. So I just put this on on and put a light switch on here and then plugged it into the wall with a different cable. So now I changed it uh, for my currently from China imported uh, amplifier module which kind of works and I kept the light switch and the other cable so I just <laughs> took this out of the light switch and it's just with this cable here. I think I have to plug anywhere uh, somewhere so but I know it's like one of these old thingies, so I have it here. Maybe this is even the plug, but yeah, I, I have the plug somewhere so I can put it back in here. So yeah, that's the current update on projects. Um, this was <laughs> my um, attempt at building a step-up converter, which got up to 70 volts, but yeah, uh, I just couldn't manage to get more out of it. Mostly because I didn't have the proper driving circuit for that MOSFET. This is a, a MOSFET that can do like 50 amps, but <clears throat> you need 10 volts to switch it. So first I tried this charge pump again, which just <laughs> couldn't supply the current. Because this thing, according to the datasheet, equals to a 70 ohm resistor. And if you try to use that to charge a cap and current... Uh, and charge and discharge this thing like several thousand times a second that's not gonna work and I probably was too lazy to just plug in my second power supply into the board but yeah that I just gave up on this because it's not that important and well I got it up to 70 volts for uh, I think a hundred kilo ohms low that's yeah not that powerful but hey it was something um, yeah you see there's total chaos here um, I got new parts. Where did I put the new parts? Um, it seems I did not put them here. Oh, actually I did. Right, it's... <laughs> yeah, it's up here. You, you know that motor? That's a project that I'm working on and I got new parts in that envelope. Which is like an ESP32, so I got some things to play with. Um, that I will have to do uh, in the coming days because... We kind of want to get this project finished that's sitting up there. Well, not the power supplies in the background, but uh, whatever is in that piece of plastic. I'm not going to tell you about it now. I will tell you about it when it's finished, which might be never, which hopefully is this year somewhere. So, yeah. And I might have to clear <laughs> clear all this shit up at some point. But uh, yeah, this thing is just here because it's broken. I want to kind of blow it up with current but yeah I'm a pussy and I don't want molten metal on my face so I'm not gonna do that yet before I have a chamber that I can do it in and maybe controlled remotely because I'm scared quite easily by popping noises and yeah <laughs> don't want to have myself being scared on video at least not yet if, if you shock me with 220 volts doesn't matter okay <laughs> I can take that but if there's a sudden popping noise which scares me that's I hate that so yeah also when I just saw this little pump this was bought for <laughs> an automatic watering system for my plants which I also never even started <laughs> because I needed parts and like a, a, a big thingy that holds water then you put the pots in there and this thing can pump the water out of the big uh, reservoir and pump it into the plants every day but yeah that would be everything <laughs> but I didn't really get to it um, so that's it for today sadly no <laughs> no progress except that well I built this and it doesn't work so I can't really show you anything I can show you a sine wave coming out of this and I can show you uh, a sine wave coming out of this or just plus voltage because it doesn't work as intended. Um, if it would work, I would just hook it up to this thing and we would probably get some resonance. I would maybe destroy my element because it would be just <coughs> blowing up, <laughs> getting resonant. Um, I still haven't glued 
or drilled the knife which is also somewhere under here I don't know where I put it but probably under this part I have not yet drilled into that knife because yeah holding a knife in a vise is quite hard <laughs> also you might be wondering about this old speaker here this is an old speaker that is from a an old radio my granddad who died like seven years ago um, he took apart a radio because it was broken and well he couldn't fix it so he asked hey you, you want to have that speaker because I collected speaker as a kid <coughs> uh, speakers like you see there's a speaker there's a speaker there's a lot of speakers over there um, so I got that speaker but I liked bassy music and this is a paper speaker <laughs> And you see, the speaker didn't like the bassy music very much, so it amazingly still moves, but yeah, it scratches. Actually, it doesn't scratch when you just push it in the middle. But yeah, that's it for today. The, the progress update, if you want to call it. Um, that's so. I hope I can show something next time I'm making a video. Um, so yeah, bye bye.